Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Math Lesson 112, the first step to a pretty important concept in fifth grade math. We are talking about finding the least common multiple of two numbers, sometimes called the LCM. So the least common multiple, or the LCM, means the smallest number, that's a multiple, of all the listed numbers. And we've been listing down multiples of number in our lessons for a while now. And the reason why this is so important is it's used to find common denominators when adding and subtracting fractions with unlike denominators. So if they were gonna ask you what's the LCM of three and five, you gotta think first of all, what's your multiples of three? Well, three times one is three, three times two is six, three times three is nine, and so on. Then you have to go and think about what's your multiples of five. Five times one would be five, five times two would be 10, five times three would be 15. Once you list out your multiples, think about which one is smallest in both rows that you listed down. And in this case, it would be 15. I have 15 as a multiple of three, and I have 15 as a multiple of five. But don't make the mistake I did when I first learned about least common multiples. Don't think that you'll always just end up multiplying the two given numbers. That doesn't work every time. I think the only time in my life I ever had a math redo was when I tried taking a shortcut and I just multiplied the two numbers. Yeah, three times five is 15. That is the least common multiple. But I assure you, the least common multiple of four and six is not, and I repeat, it is not 24. Take a look in your four row, your multiples of four, four, eight, 12, 16, 20. In your six row, your multiples of six, six, 12, 18, 24. Yeah, 24 is a common multiple, but it's not the least common multiple the least common multiple of four and six would be 12. And because we use these to make equivalent fractions, to add and subtract fractions with unlike denominators, if you don't use the least common multiple, you're gonna end up having to do a whole lot more reducing and extra work at the end. So you always wanna try to find the least common multiple. So let's jump right in and think about what would be the least common multiple of seven and 10. So you'd start off thinking about multiples of seven, seven, 14, 21, 28, 35, and so on. And you'd also have to start listing out multiples of 10. 10 times one is 10, 10 times two is 20, 10 times three is 30, and so on until you found the smallest number that's a multiple of both. In this case, the least common multiple of seven and 10 would be 70. So let's try one without a multiplication chart here. What would be the least common multiple of two and five? So I'd have to list out multiples of two, and I would have to list out multiples of five. Let's start doing that right now. So to start off with multiples of two, I'd have two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, right? And there is no real set number of how many multiples to list out. Maybe you'll find it in the first three. Maybe it'll take more than that. You just have to keep writing down multiples 
until you find one that's common. That would be in both rows. So let's go and check out our multiples of five now. All right, I didn't have to list out too many there before I found a common multiple. Do you see it? The least common multiple of two and five would be 10. So when they ask for the least common multiple of two and five, we can just write down 10. Let's try another one here. What's the least common multiple of three and six? So I'm gonna start listing out multiples of three and then I'm gonna have to list out multiples of six until I find one number that would be a multiple of both. Are we ready? So my multiples of three, three, six, nine, 12. My multiples of six, six, 12, 18. Don't get confused thinking the least common multiple is 12. Actually, the least common multiple of both, I have six times one is six, and three times two is six, so the least common multiple actually would be six. What would be the least common multiple of four and five? Let's get ready to list out multiples of four, and then we're gonna go and list out some multiples of five. Are we ready? Multiples of four. All right, four times one is four, four times two is eight, four times three is 12, four times four is 16, four times five is 20, and four times six is 24. That should be enough multiples of four. Let's go and list out our multiples of five. All right, do we see it? The least common multiple of both four and five Hey, that would be 20. Check out this one. The denominators of 5 eighths and 3 tenths are 8 and 10. They were asking what is the least common multiple of 8 and 10. So again, think about your multiples of 8, think about your multiples of 10, and you can see right here that the least common multiple of eight and 10 would be 40. And I'm gonna jumpstart you right now. The reason why least common multiple is so important because we can now use the least common multiple of eight and 10 to make equivalent fractions with the common denominator. Up until now, we haven't been able to add 5 eighths and 3 tenths. But now that we know what least common multiples are used for, we can go and make equivalent fractions. They've had us practicing this for months now, but they've always told you the least common multiple. They would say, write an equivalent fraction to 5 eighths with 40 as a denominator. Now it's up to you to look at the denominators, find the least common multiple, and decide what to use. So this part we should be able to have down, remember? It's all about finding the number in the middle, the fraction equal to one that we're gonna multiply by to make an equivalent fraction, right? So let's start off looking at the top. We're going to say 8 times what equals 40? And I think the answer there would be 5, right? And if I'm going to multiply the denominator by 5, I also have to multiply my numerator by 5, right? 5 times 5, that's 25. Let's go and do it again down at the bottom. 10 times what equals 40? In this case, my number is 4. I'm going to multiply the denominator by 4. I also have to multiply my numerator by 4, right? 3 times 4, hey, that's going to give us 12. So now, what would be 25 fortieths plus 12 fortieths? That would leave you a final fractional answer of 37 fortieths. So just using the least common multiple as 
a common denominator, and we already know how to make the equivalent fractions, right? So we're jump-starting you onto this lesson that's going to show up in just a few more lessons. You should be ready for it. And that, my friends, is the end. You are definitely going to want a scratch piece of paper and a pencil, maybe a multiplication chart if you're not real sure, and good luck on the Socrative. <laughs>